Welcome to Writing with Mr. Ruck. Today is episode nine, revisioning setting. I hope everyone had a really awesome spring break where they could go outside and enjoy some time together with their family. And boy, how about that weather? It was beautiful. I, I know I saw more people on the trails than I've ever seen out there. And you know what? Everybody was staying away from each other, doing a little physical distancing. Super cool. Uh, I hope that you were able to do something similar and that you really had had fun. But speaking of fun, we are going to actually going be going on a little further in our writing than uh, you may have thought we were going to. Last time we talked together, we were finishing up uh, our draft of our fiction writing story, and we kind of left it to where it would be a good idea to finish up a few different uh, endings and combine everything together, take some time to do a little rereading and editing to make sure it sounds good, and then we were turning it in. Now, from here, we've taken a week off, and we probably haven't thought about that story at all. And that's right where we want to be. Here's the deal. Just like you, I get tired of doing something for a long period of time. And doing one story for two weeks, even though it took a little bit to figure out what story we were going to choose, can be challenging and can be a little tiring. And so I think now we have the energy to go back to that story that we worked on and bring it to completion, make it as good as it can be. So we're gonna spend a little bit more time working on that story. If you don't already, make sure you've got your bring them out writing journal ready to go. I hope that really reminds you to bring it out. Computer or handwritten journal. So, <clears throat> For something that can kind of connect about the job we're doing in our writing today, it's interesting to think about how our environment affects us. During this time apart from each other where we may end up sometimes spending a lot of time inside, I know you've probably experienced something like I have. When I am inside, I think that I'm having fun, I'm doing whatever I want to do, I'm watching some movies, binging something cool on Netflix like The Tiger King, although I doubt a lot of you have watched that and you probably shouldn't. But the point is, we're doing all those things inside that seem like that's what we want, but until we realize that, man... I'm starting to feel like not too great. I wonder what it could be. I mean, I'm getting to do all these things I always want to do as much as I want, whether it be playing video games, reading a book, just getting to do nothing. But then we go outside and it's like this veil has been lifted from us. Veil being like something that covers our head or our eyes. So we see things in a different way. And I think that sometimes... Uh, our characters are really similar to us in that way as far as how their surrounding affects us. I know when I'm stuck inside, boy, I uh, I think I start to feel pretty awful. And I go outside and it's like I've just been recharged. And our characters get affected by the setting just as much as we do. And so we're going to see that today about how my character is going to intentionally be being af in affected by the setting. We want to make sure that those two are connected. We don't want to try to save our character necessarily from the setting, like you're kind of saving yourself in my example, but you'll see how that works. So our big idea today is that writers, you, me, revise their setting to help advance the larger meaning of the story. So today when we're looking at this example here, right in front of us, this last one that I wrote when I was writing my ending. We want to be thinking about where we're going with this story. So probably a change in the character, because 
that's the big meaning we're probably getting to, some sort of realization, and think, in this scene, what is setting doing to help? To help establish what my character is going through. So I'm just going to read this first little bit and um, have in my mind where my character is going. So my character uh, needs to go from this place where right now he's unsure about what to do. He kind of feels empty inside and he's going to have to make a choice. And the, the setting that's around him is hopefully going to be something that sort of echoes that and really emphasizes that. Because I know that I tend to really be stuck in the head of my character instead of experiencing everything around them. Here we go. David's stomach felt empty as he walked slowly out of Mr. Simmons' office. What are my parents going to say? He thought. Mr. Simmons' advice had seemed easy enough in David's head, but he doubted the populars would bother with it. That was the tricky part being friends with the popular kids, or risking that to be nice to someone who, quite frankly, annoyed the pants off of him. So, I read that, and I think to myself, boy, that's all just me thinking to myself, and, or David thinking to himself, rather, and the narrator giving a little bit of extra information that isn't in the form of thought. And I want my surroundings to be echoing that. And so for me, David sounds confused. He's not sure what he needs to do. And so I want his surrounding to sort of help disorient him as well. And so I can imagine, since he's kind of walking back to class, that he's going to end up sort of being in a hall to where it feels like his thoughts are maybe bouncing around the hall. He's going to hear his foots echoing down the hall. It's going to seem like he's stuck inside some sort of experiment and he's not sure what to, what he's you know going to have happen next. So, I'm going to quickly write in a little version of this. Let's see if I can do this typing in front of you. This is big time. So, I think that uh, right here, either before the sentence or after, is a good time to insert some of this. So, Mr. Simmons' advice had seemed easy enough in David's head, but he doubted the populars would bother with it. That was the tricky part. Being friends with the popular kids or risking that. Hmm. I feel like before we get into the tricky part, I'm going to start writing this new part having to do with the setting. So here we go. David's footsteps. That might be one word. Footsteps echoed down the hall. Crashing into his brain. He felt alone. He wished someone could choose what to do. Looking down the hallway in front of him, it was abandoned. Uh, so we're, we're almost feeling like everyone's deserted him. He's on this almost island on his own. His footsteps seem to get louder in his mind as he walked down the hall. Now I'm going to insert a little bit of thinking in there just to help break it up. So he's going to kind of wonder to himself, what do I do? What choice is right? First before, he's kind of wondering to himself, ah, you know, what should my parents, what, are, what would my parents think? But now he's kind of thinking, what is right? So now, I think that what I'd like to have him do is 
have someone walk into the hall as, and have him sort of feel in his mind like, oh, I know this person. Maybe it's someone I could ask. And this may not work. This is me trying things out. Um, but he's going to kind of think to himself, oh, I wonder what they have to say about this. And he's going to call out their name. And that person is going to kind of run away from him. And it's going to emphasize more of this setting of feeling alone. Mm. You know, as I start to say that, it's a good idea. But actually, in my mind, all of a sudden started to envision these white walls around him that were avo like devoid of any sort of help. They're not going to help his mind wander. It's almost like he's stuck inside this um, that sort of room that's like a padded room that they put people that um, are having some sort of psychological disturbance. So walking down the white washed hall he looked around Ooh, I put around twice searching for some answer any answer yeah I like that that any answer is very desperate let me go back and fix some of these things louder wow how how did I get that one wrong well that's okay it's good for you to see that I get things wrong. He wished someone would choose what to do for him. Well, I think you get the idea. But we're going to go back and just reread now how it sounds. David's stomach felt empty as he walked slowly out of Mr. Simmons' office. What are my parents going to say, he thought. Mr. Simmons' advice had seemed easy enough in David's head, but he doubted the populars would bother with it. David's footsteps echoed down the hall, crashing into his brain. He felt alone. He wished someone would choose what to do for him. Looking down the hallway in front of him, it was abandoned. His footsteps seemed to get louder in his mind as he walked down the hall. What do I do? What choice is right? Walking down the whitewashed hall, he looked around, searching for some answer, any answer. What was the tricky... That was the tricky part. So I'm back to that line. So... Sometimes when we're inserting parts like this, it doesn't fit perfectly. And something I notice is, boy, I haven't walked down the hall three times. There's too much repetition there. I think that I either need to get rid of one of those or sort of rework it. Now, as far as our lesson goes, that's where it ends. I just need you to see what it looks like as far as me trying to add details about the setting. And keep thinking in your mind about what's the purpose? What am I adding? Why am I adding it? For me, I wanted to show that he's feeling really alone, that he's struggling with making a choice, and the setting is only echoing this form. It's only uh, emphasizing it even more and making it more of a struggle. That is what we should think about is, if I'm adding this, how is it helping get my character to the final meaning of the story? My character has to choose something that's a hard choice and he has to make it on his own. Therefore, right now, he needs to feel more alone than he's ever felt in his life. So, uh, when we meet uh, this week, we'll just meet one time the beginning of the week. And um, I don't expect that you'll have this done, but you might, since I'll post the lesson uh, before our 10 a.m. Zoom. Uh, if you do have some of these things done, it would be great if uh, you were prepared prepared to share some sort of revision. Uh, make sure, though, that uh, for this lesson, you reread your whole story and you revise through the one lens of setting throughout that story. There will be times that um, your character is doing things and it wouldn't make sense to add a bunch of setting details. But I chose a part where my character is very alone. He's walking down a very uh, deserted hallway. And for me, it made sense to add the setting details there. Setting details that, again, work towards the meaning of my story. Well, friends, that's been it. That's been Riding with Mr. Ruckdashel. Hope you enjoyed Episode 9, Revisioning Setting. 
Make sure that you really take the time to reread and see your story in a new way. That's what revision is about. Use the lens of setting, setting that helps to emphasize what the story is really about. All right, everyone stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourself. Peace.